Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. So by the time this episode of Fighting for the Faith airs, the Domino Revival movie will have already hit the theaters for one day. <laughs> I think they're hoping that they can get they can stretch more out of this, but uh, you know I I want to show you just two examples today of what we're looking at as far as the quality of teacher uh, that we're going to be getting in the Domino Revival movie. To say we're scraping the bottom of the barrel is uh, that's an insult to barrels and their bottoms. So the. <laughs> best way I can put it. So let's just get to it. I'm going to whirl up the desktop here and uh, as, as things are cooling off here in, in North Dakota. I, 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 alas, alas, I, I pine for the warmer climate of Southern California where I used to live, but that, that's a whole other story. Uh, let's do this. All right. So uh, on what day was this? So it was one day ago. That would have been on the uh, 17th. On October 17th, the uh, the cast of the Domino Revival did a Zoom call together. <laughs> and, uh, and they prophesied over what the Domino Revival movie was going to do. And... Uh, <laughs> We're going to have to unpeel, uh, unpack some of this stuff, but I just wanted to highlight two of the people. Uh, we're going to note that Ryan Lestrange has uh, made regular appearances here on Fighting for the Faith for a long time, and I'll remind you why. Uh, but also Jeremiah Johnson, he's kind of covered up by the closed captioning. He's down here uh, underneath Ryan Lestrange in the, uh, in the uh, false prophet uh, Hollywood squares that they're doing, they're playing there on Zoom. So uh, we're, we're just going to uh, remind you all of just what it is that we're dealing with and <laughs> what we could expect. I kid you not, in this in this lead up to, to the release of the movie, they were talking about how they're conquering the entertainment mountain. <laughs> no, they're not. I, I would say that uh, this episode of Fighting for the Faith is far more entertaining than <laughs> what it is that we're going to be seeing in the Domino Revival movie. But uh, let's let's jump into this a little bit, shall we? Uh, here is uh, Ryan Lestrange, and uh, he'll be speaking uh, right underneath Isaiah Saldivar here. And um, let's just let's get an idea of, wow, the, the high caliber a Bible teacher that we're going to get from the Domino Revival movie. Here we go. Come on, so good. What else are you guys seeing? You know, I really believe that God's going to drop mantles of fire in this movie. So a lot of... <laughs> God's going to drop fire mantles in the movie. Have you, I, I, have you contacted the authorities? Have you th ever thought that this may not be a safe situation? I mean, could you imagine fire mantles being released in theaters? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if the fire department is going to approve. So <laughs> oh, I'm just going to back this <laughs> just a little yeah. bit. You know, I really believe that God's going to drop mantles of fire in this movie. So a lot Come of people... On. They are going to church. Uh, they are serving. They are doing this stuff, but they're discouraged. They're overwhelmed. They're trying to figure out how to pay their bills, how to live life. They're trying to figure out how to survive. You know, I live outside of Atlanta. Uh, Pastor Mike, you're in New York. Yeah. So, and, and by the way, um, since we began covering Ryan Lestrange, he's gone from prophet to apostle. He's a self-appointed apostle. There's a lot going on in the cities of America and around the world that people are distressed. They don't know how they're going to make it. About three weeks ago, I was trying to preach. We were having a Sunday night. Maybe it was a healing service. I honestly don't remember. So much happened. But we were having a Sunday night gathering. And um, all of a sudden, there was a young lady that they wheeled up to the front in a wheelchair. And a couple of our prayer team was praying for her. And it was like the moment in the service, we're transitioning. We're trying to go to the next thing. And they're kind of like going off in prayer. And I'm like, okay. So by the way, stories like this are very common in Pentecostal, Charismatic, and New Apostolic Reformation churches, uh, but uh, receipts and actual documentation, 
very thin. Hey y'all, is this is this in order? Is this out of order? I'm gonna just watch and see what's going on. And all of a sudden, this young lady in the wheelchair starts to rise up. Here's the backstory. She had climbed up to, it was National Suicide Prevention Day. Now I remember that because I had written that on my note card. I want to say something about it. Uh, now, I, I'm gonna interrupt this story because that's what this is. It's a story. And I want to remind you of what it is that we deal with when we deal with Ryan Lestrange. This, this, this is kind of the stuff that we've covered in the past on Fighting for the Faith. Uh, he used to do every Monday, he would get a prophetic word from God and he would release his Monday word. Uh, he hasn't done that in a while. But let me, uh, let me remind you of the caliber of prophetic words that we get from Apostle. Ryan Lestrange. Hi friends, it's Ryan Lestrange with the Monday Word. My Monday Word for you today is two secrets for mega breakthrough. Two secrets for mega breakthrough. I'll <laughs> <laughs> two secrets for mega breakthrough. I mean, I'd be satisfied with uh, uh, just regular old breakthrough. But uh, how, there's two secrets for mega breakthrough, okay. I wanna give you two stunning secrets that will literally break you through to the next level. Oh, wow, I can't hardly wait to break through to the next level. Grab a prophecy bingo card. Secret number one is wisdom. I believe the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of God himself, will come into your situation and accelerate you towards that mega breakthrough. <laughs> bingo! Uh, yeah. The, the, this is what we're dealing with here. This is another, this is windbaggery. He ain't saying anything. This is prophecy bingo word salad kind of stuff. I love in the book of Proverbs 8, the wisdom chapter, it says, does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice? You know, today, wisdom is calling out to you. Today, God wants to answer you the same spirit that hovered upon the face of the deeps as God was in the realm of creation is available to you today, calling out to you. And the Bible said, she stands, wisdom stands beside the gates at the opening of the city and cries out. The Bible says wisdom will speak noble things and the opening. Right. That's true wisdom. I had not seen any wisdom here in this prophecy. Of her lips will speak and reveal right things. You know, wisdom will give you revelation and insight to break through whatever the barrier is. If you've got a barrier today, a money barrier, a healing barrier, a family barrier, you need wisdom. You need to begin to decree and declare wisdom. Begin to call forth the wisdom of God. Begin to say, I want. So if you have barriers, you need to decree and declare wisdom. Okay. Begin wisdom. Begin to seek out wisdom. Begin to speak and declare wisdom over your life. Proverbs said, take instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is better than jewels. And it goes on to say this, that wisdom will unlock economic increase. Wis <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just... I. <sighs> How do I describe this, Okay. This is tomfoolery, right? This is this is the only people falling for this are the spiritually deceived, and uh, and those who legitimately don't know their Bibles. He's not saying anything, on like the the intelligence scale, intelligence scale of like lucid communication. Uh, we'll, we'll say you know uh, Albert Einstein on one end. And then this girl on the other end, let's kind of put her into the mix Did here. Did you know that there are over five languages in this world? No. We don't need all these languages, people. I agree. We should, we should just pair them back. We don't need no British language or Canadian language or Hawaiian language or Alaskan language. We need just American, okay? And why would that be? Just American language. Nothing more, nothing less, just American. You want to know why? Because why? 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 Please tell us why. Because the letters are pretty. They're cute, pretty letters. Like, <laughs> like you can't get letters, like, prettier in the world, okay? All right. So, on a, on, you know, so Ryan Lestrange's <clears throat> prophetic abilities, as far as intelligible lucidity, Albert Einstein on one end, this girl on the other, here's where he comes in. <laughs> Right, you, you, you get the idea. This, this is nonsense. This guy isn't speaking words from God. In fact, he's blaspheming God's name. God didn't give him this Monday word or any of the words that he's given. 
So he's getting them from somewhere else. But let's come back to this. All right. So he continues on. Uh, and the awareness of it and how we need to pray for people that that's their struggle. So she had she had went to the CNN Tower, famous building here in Atlanta. She had climbed up on the fourth floor and jumped out in an effort to kill herself. She had uh -huh. shattered most all the bones in her body. And the doctor said, we put you back together as best we can. She had not been able to walk since that time. She's wheeled in, in a wheelchair. The power of God. Name and medical records, please. Arrest her. And she's lifted out of the wheelchair and she begins to walk. Next week, she comes back on a walker. The next week, she come back doing something else. I don't remember what it was. And then the, the fourth week, she's just walking. The That's called just natural healing, sir. That's called natural healing. The leg braces were off that first night. Now, that's a great miracle. But here's the thing. It touched her mother. People were messaging me going, I know this girl. I know her story. I don't have a problem with God answering prayer. But I assure you that if she was healed, it had nothing to do with anything regarding you, Ryan Lestrange. Come the on. fire of God hit that girl. And for the people that take the time to get to this movie and bring your friends, bring your half safe friends, bring your friends that, that they, it's been a long time since they were radical for God and they used to be radical for God. Uh, bring your friends that are in ministry, but they've gotten weary, bring them all. I believe that fire is gonna meet them. And here's what I saw. <laughs> Just, fire is gonna meet them at the movie theaters. The fire marshal does not approve. Uh, this, the pandemonium, the panic, the death toll. What is this prophecy regarding what's gonna happen with the so-called Domino Revival movie? I saw the Spirit of the Lord throwing mantles down in this movie that people- uh, Really, throw them, just throw them down. I mean, that's kind of gross if you think about it. Cause I mean, the last thing I would wanna do is pick up a mantle that's been on the ground at a movie theater, you know, with the popcorn and the, and the soda pop. And <laughs> have you seen the ground at the movie theaters? God's just going to be throwing them down on the ground there. No, nah. I'll, I'll just leave it. Thanks. People are going to be awakened because this movie tells uh, stories of progressive encounters and events that one Come thing on. led thing led to another thing. And God is saying, I'm going to weave you into the story of what I'm going to do in this hour. The world says it's dark. The enemy. No, God didn't say that. He says, I've got you. But the Lord says, I'm about to revive you. And I'm going to cast a mantle in the midst of fire over your life, says the Lord. And I'm going to disrupt. Did you steal this from Chuck Pierce? I just, I just got to know. You, you, you stole this non-lucid non paragraph of word salad nonsense. You stole it from Chuck Pierce, didn't you, Ryan? Huh? She footnote him and give him credit. Every demonic plan, demonic Come on. thought says demonic bondage i'm going to break and annihilate the spirit of suicide says the lord i'm going to bring hope to the hopeless and i'm going to bring a release of the captive but for many god's god's gonna you know destroy the the, the uh, spirit of suicide oh good we can just check that off the list it's not gonna be a problem in america anymore right of you that, that are unsure of your next step i hear the lord say your next is now and he's going to meet you in that domino revival movie you think <laughs> God is not going to meet anybody at the Dom Domino Revival movie. God isn't promised to be at the Domino Revival movie. And based upon the preachers and prophets, prophets and apostles that are featured in this Domino Revival movie, I'm pretty sure that the pr executive producer has a 666 area code. You know, I, I'm just saying. So, you know, next up in uh, the uh, cast here, I mentioned him. Like I said, we're only going to feature two f folks here, is Jeremiah Johnson. And uh, I'm going to remind you about Jeremiah Johnson, but uh, let's let's listen in as uh, Isaiah Saldivar here is pitching and and, and, and going to be spotlighting Jeremiah Johnson. And then I also wanted to just uh, spotlight Jeremiah Johnson. I know he has something stirring. If you guys don't know Jeremiah Johnson, he is a prophetic voice to the nation. He's given... No, he's not. A lot of us in this call right now, legitimate prophetic words. In fact, for my... Legitimate prophetic words from Jeremiah Johnson. Right. My life, I've had three or four legitimate prophetic words from him that no one else knew about. All right, like this one. Hang on a second here. Let's let's take a look. See if you guys remember this. This, down. this is October 27th, 2020. Our church never shut down. I preach in 15 states, 30 cities, thousands and thousands. Yeah, uh-huh. Hang on a second here. I'm going to back this up here. Women coming. I think they were a little premature. They were accurate. But now what we're going to see is Coney Barrett opens up the gates. All right. So Coney Barrett's going to open up the gates. That's one of his prophecies from October 27, 2020. Overcoming the feminist agenda. Uh-huh. Overcoming the feminist agenda. Coney Barrett yeah. and watch the re-election. 
Okay, let me back this up. Listen to what he says. And people freaking out, but the Lord told me to watch the L.A. Dodgers, yeah. to watch Amy Coney Barrett, and watch the re-election of Donald Trump. So, Uh-huh, watch the re-election of Donald Trump. Yeah, that didn't happen. Um. I just wanted to bring good news to you again. We've been traveling all over the nation. We have refused to shut down. Our church never shut down. I preach in 15 states, 30 cities. Thousands and thousands are gathering in America, refusing the fear refusing to bow to a satanic agenda. And then finally, I'll just end it here. Why vote for Donald Trump? Listen. Yeah, so he prophesied that Donald Trump would win re-election in 2020. There's a term that uh, we use, a biblical term that we use for uh, people like Jeremiah Johnson. All right, uh, Deuteronomy 18. All right. This is one of the tests of a prophet. Now, a lot of today's NAR, charismatic, charismatic types don't, don't want to deal with Deuteronomy 18. So they have to find a way to undo what it says, but you can't undo what it says. Remember the uh, command in scripture. Uh, this is in the New Testament. Uh, and the command is this, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. All right, so you're supposed to test the spirits because many false prophets have gone out in the world. And this is a command, the do not believe part, the pastuata, do not believe. So, me ponte pastuata, uh, you know, enumatai pastuata, do not believe every, every spirit. But you got to test them to see whether they're from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Okay, so Deuteronomy 18 Here's what it says, and watch the New Testament implications for this. Uh, all the people out there say, this is a, this doesn't apply in the New Testament. Yes, it do. Check this out. Yahweh, your God, will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It's to him you shall listen. Who is that prophesied about? Oh, I know. Jesus Christ. When did he show up in the New Testament? Just saying, okay? Just as you desired of Yahweh your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my God or see this great fire anymore lest I die. And Yahweh said to me, they are right in what the, uh, they have spoken. So I will raise up for them a prophet like you, Moses, from among their brothers. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself were required of him. You, you, you must listen to this prophet. Who's the prophet? It's Jesus. That's He's the one who fulfills this prophecy. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, and that's what Jeremiah Johnson did. Yeah, Jeremiah Don Johnson spoke a presumptuous word. Listen again. Trump. So I just wanted to bring... Okay, let me back this up just a little. Here we go. To watch the L.A. Dodgers, yeah. to watch Amy Coney Barrett, and yeah. watch the re-election of Donald Trump. So, Yeah, we got to watch the re-election of Donald Trump, okay? So what's the text says, all right? The prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak. Now, I can definitively say that God did not command uh, uh, Jeremiah Johnson to say that Donald Trump was going to win re-election in 2020. How do I know? Okay, you know, so we, we continue. The prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks a uh, in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Keep in mind, if Jeremiah Johnson were living in uh, the theocracy of Israel at, at, you know, in the Old Testament times, uh, that, this is a capital offense. And if you say in your heart, well, how may we know the word that, that Yahweh has not spoken? Again, this is in the context of the prophecy regarding Jesus. This, con this still applies today. How may I know a word that Yahweh has not spoken? Okay? Remember, test the spirits. 
You're, you're, you're not, you are required by God to not believe every spirit, but you got to test and you got to see whether they are from God. You have to determine the source. Well, Deuteronomy 18 says, if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that Yahweh has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of Yahweh, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that Yahweh has not spoken. Has anything changed? No. Did Yahweh have Jeremiah Johnson give this prophecy from his car on October 27th, 2020? I'm so excited. I, I know that there's so much fear and paranoia and people freaking out, but the Lord told me to watch the LA Dodgers, yeah. to watch Amy Coney Barrett and watch the reelection of Donald Trump. So yeah. Did God give him that word? No. That is a word that Yahweh has not spoken. No, not so watch the test. Do not believe every spirit. Test the spirits, plural. So whatever spirit was speaking to uh, Jeremiah Johnson, he got that spirit got two out of three correct. But the standard of knowing that God has actually spoken is 100%. So this is not God, the Holy Spirit, who is speaking through Jeremiah Johnson. Still is not today. In fact, Christ himself warns us about men like Jeremiah Johnson and Ryan Lestrange and the other cast members of the Domino Revival. Uh, it, here's what it says. Um, so Jesus left the temple. This is Matthew 24. The context is helpful here. And he was going away and his disciples came, uh, came to point out to him uh, the buildings of the temple. He answered, uh, you see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another will, that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed. They must take place, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginnings of birth pains. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and put you to death. You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many, not a few, many, many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. He goes on to say um, in uh, verse 24, false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you beforehand. I would note that um, Jeremiah Johnson hasn't performed any miraculous signs or wonders that are just, whoa! No, the only sign or wonder he's done is given false prophecies and non-lucid prophecies, which you'll see. He is a false prophet. He fails the test of a, of a true prophet. Christians are forbidden to listen to him, and he's exactly, exactly the kind of person that uh, Jesus prophesied would arise near his return. Jeremiah Johnson and Ryan Lestrange, they're all the same. They're false prophets. They're false teachers. So let's uh, let's continue on here. I was freaked out when he gave it to me because I'm like, how did you know that? Nobody knows that. But they really did steer my life and steer some of my destiny. And so, Jeremiah, I would love to hear about anything the Lord has spoke to you about this movie. Or you were there at the theater. You saw the movie. You and your daughter are both. I won't give anything away. I'm, I'm having a hard time, Mike, not yeah, spoiling no anything tonight. No I'm having a hard time. But you and your daughter were in the film. What did you think about the movie? And then is the Lord speaking to you about anything in regards to this film? All right. So we're going to ask a false prophet. By all biblical standards, he's a false prophet. And some of you are sitting there going, well, he repented for four seconds. He should not be doing any prophetic ministry at all. He's a false prophet. Yeah, you know, I believe that the Domino Revival movie is going to be a lifeline to the Elijahs of God. I really believe that Jezebel and all her evil spells have been waging war against so many who carry the spirit and power of Elijah. And God has just been speaking to me about as people sit in the theater, uh, the spirit of Jezebel is going to be dismantled. 
she's going to be dismantled in the fire that's coming that Ryan Lestrange talked about. So, so, so fire from God, fire mantles are going to be given out. Uh, there's going to be a fire of the Lord breaking out and the spirit of Jezebel is going to burn up in that fire, apparently. Okay. All right. Uh, he's not saying anything. Have you noticed that? This is another example of empty talking windbaggery. And the reason why the Domino Revival, it's a lifeline to the Elijahs of God because it's going to shout to this nation. Come there on. are still 7,000 others that have oh. not bowed their knee to Baal. And I just see men and women who have been uh, just oppressed and discouraged by the spirit of Jezebel. When they watch this film, it's going to be their lifeline. They're going to wake up. They're going to sign up again. Again, they're going to re-enlist and there's just family revival, generational revival that's going to come. But this is a pick. Will I get a breakthrough? Me up. This is a fresh breath of air. If you're watching and you're just pondering, should I go or not? I just think there's so much encouragement. There's so much personal revival. <laughs> no, I should not go. This the God isn't speaking through this movie. It's clear by the caliber of false prophet and false teacher that this is a movie to be marked and avoided at all costs. That's going to mark the Elijahs of God. And again, I just see Jezebel, the manipulation, the control. This Come movie on, is going to shake denominationalism. Ooh, it's going to shake denominationalism. Ooh, on a one night release, really. Uh, this is going to challenge key leaders who are propping up <laughs> demonic doctrines of cessationism. It's oh, the, those those wascally cessationists. Uh huh. <laughs> you you really need to watch the cessationist uh, documentary if you have not seen it. It's really well done. Uh, I, I like I like what they did with it, but uh, uh, alas, I'll leave that for another discussion because it's got all these guys really upset. It's going to shake them to their core, and I see the Holy Spirit coming strongly upon his Elijahs of God. 7,000, 70,000, 700,000 have not yet bowed their knee to Baal, and th this movie is coming from a guy who legitimately fails the, the test of a true prophet who liturgy legitimately is exactly in the group of people that Jesus warned us about in the last days, there would be many false prophets. And he hasn't bent the knee to Baal, really. It's amazing, it rocked our family. We're, we're buying up a theater here in North Carolina, sounding the alarm, we're, we're so excited. Fire, fire. Vlad, let's hear from Vlad. Uh. So those are the two I wanted to highlight. And by the time this airs on my YouTube channel, uh, the, the, the premiere, the world glow, you know, that will have already come and gone. And, you know, their, their one night in the movie theaters will have already come and gone. And they're hoping for a second. This, the reason why they put this video out is to raise awareness and hype so that they can get as many people to the movie theaters as possible so that they can potentially get another night, you know. And this first domino would lead to other dominoes, which would then lead to them conquering the entertainment mountain and nonsense like this. It's, <sighs> it's a mess. But I would remind you, I would remind you that God didn't give them any of these words to speak. And instead, we must keep in mind that God's word forbids what these men are doing. One of the Ten Commandments, you familiar with those, those Ten Commandments? One of the Ten Commandments says, you shall not take the name of Yahweh your God in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. To be taken a name, God, that you shall not carry the name of Yahweh your God into Shah, into vanity, into emptiness. These are all empty words and deception. These men are false prophets. They are false teachers. They are schemers. Uh, they are men who are pursuing, ambitiously pursuing fame and fortune. And they are exploiting people with all kinds of false words. They are not serving the body of Christ. They are serving themselves. And the spirit that is at work here within them, it ain't the Holy Spirit. It's a different spirit altogether. Domino revival. 
Uh, I'm going to revisit in, in hopefully by the end of November, uh, uh, many of the failed prophecies of this very episode that we were just looking at here. <laughs> Will there be fire mantles released at the Domino Revival? Stay tuned! And the other prophecies we'll take a look at, because they, they prophesied over this movie. And very specific prophecies, and we'll see if they came true. We'll, we'll have to revisit this sometime in the near future. So hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video is down below in the description. And I'd just like to give a quick shout out to those of you who support us financially. Without your, without your support, we could not do what we are doing here at Fighting for the Faith. And I wanna thank you. If you would like to join our crew and support us financially with, along with the other people who've joined our crew, there's a link below down in the description that'll take you to our website and you, can too, you too can join our crew. And if you do, thank you. We truly cannot do what we are doing here without you. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.